Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an awesome little x86 board. And in fact, this actually has 12 cores and 16 threads because it's powered by an i7-1260P. This is from ASRock's Industrial Division, and over on their website they do refer to these as single board computers, but with this you do have to add your own RAM and storage, so I'm not exactly sure if it's going to be classified as a single board computer. But if you head over to their website and check out their products line, you go to single board computers, you can find this along with some Ryzen variants. I went with the Intel version, and they do offer a ton of different models. So if you're interested in checking this out, I'll leave a link in the description. So yeah, I'm actually a big fan of these little boards. I've done a few projects with them, like putting the Tiger Lake variant inside of GameCube. Everything worked out really well with that. And if you do end up getting one of these, basically you're going to get the board itself, a 90 watt power supply, user manual, and a screw for an M.2 drive. So real quick, I did want to give you a size comparison between a Raspberry Pi and this board. As you can see, it does come in much larger, but we've got a lot more power here, and it does require an active cooler because we've got a pretty powerful CPU. Like I mentioned, this is using the i7-1260P, 12 cores, 16 threads, and by the way, this does support Thunderbolt 4, so you can connect an eGPU to it. Since this came as a bare bones unit, I do have to add my own RAM and storage. I'm going with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz and a 512 gigabyte M.2 drive. Another thing I'm going to be adding to this unit are a couple standoffs just to keep it up off of the desk. But you know, assembling something like this is super easy. All you'll have to do is add your RAM and storage device. Uh, if you want to add Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, we do have a spot for it, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it blank because on the rear, we've got a gigabit Ethernet port and a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. I'm just going to plug that right in. And personally, I don't need Wi-Fi at the moment. I really just want to get some testing out of the way on this board. So when it comes to the specs, we've got that Intel Alder Lake i7-1260P, 12 cores, 16 threads, and with this we get 4 performance cores with a max clock up to 4.7 GHz, and 8 efficiency cores with a max clock up to 3.4. But the way this board is set up, we're basically at a locked 35 watt TDP, which really isn't that bad for this, but these can do a lot more. I mean, we can get higher clocks while we're gaming with more wattage, but unfortunately we can only bring it up to 35 watts. And I understand they did it because of the form factor and the cooling system on it, but it would have been really nice to be able to change this from the BIOS. Now, one thing that they did add in the BIOS was disabling some of the cores. We can actually disable all of the performance cores or all of the efficiency cores. And in turn, it allows it to send more power to the GPU and the other cores to get higher clocks on each. But yeah, this thing is definitely snappy, and it's not the first time I've tested out that 1260p on the channel. Recently, the WinMax 2 was released with that 1260p. I got a couple videos on that. And I've been a big fan of this chip for a little while, especially when it comes to emulation. These Alder Lake chips are definitely some of my favorite when it comes to that. But with the release of the new Ryzen 6000 series, uh, that might be changing. But it's really hard to get your hands on a 6000 series, at least as I'm making this video. And these are basically all over the place. You can head over to Best Buy and pick up a 1260p laptop or a 1240p laptop. But yeah, I mean, even using this as your everyday desktop, it's going to get you by just fine. You could definitely even do some 1080p video editing on this. I wanted to show off a little bit of 4K video playback from YouTube. Right off the bat, had a couple drop frames, but this chip here will breeze through 4K 60. And by the way, we've actually got four video outputs on this, up to 4K 60 FPS on each of them. We've got the display port in the rear, full size HDMI, and both of those USB type C ports on the front. So the first thing I wanted to show off was Forza Horizon 5 running on this board. We're at 720p low settings, and by the end of this, I got an average of 67 FPS. Not bad, but we are at 720p low. Unfortunately, when it comes to these XE graphics paired up with DDR4 RAM, this is about as good as it's going to get with this game. Now, if you don't mind playing at 30, you can set this to medium settings, 1080p, and have a really good time with it, but I wanted to see what we could do with it, and in order to get 60 out of this, we do have to drop it down to 720. PS3 emulation on these Alder Lake chips has always worked out really well. As you can see, we are pulling basically the maximum wattage from this. You'll see it jump up to around 38 every once in a while. And overall, when it comes to emulation on this board, it's going to do PS2, it'll do Wii U, GameCube, Wii. You can get some 3DS out of the way with this. I mean, there's lots of stuff that can be done with this. 
the next thing I did was just run a couple initial benchmarks. And first up, we've got Geekbench 5. And at 35 watts, we can get a single core score of 1245, multi 7225. Now, with this chip here, I've been able to get much higher scores with other systems, but that was due to having a higher TDP. So there is a bit more we can get out of this, and maybe a BIOS update down the road will unlock that. And the final thing I ran for this video was 3D Mark Night Raid. We got a 15,236. With a lot of the Alder Lake laptops and tablets out there right now, they're utilizing DDR5, which definitely helps out with these Iris XE graphics. And we've seen higher scores up in the 18,000s with other systems. But remember, we've only got DDR4 here running at 3200 megahertz, and it uses that system memory as VRAM. But now I want to test out a few more PC games, and we're also going to test out PS2 and Wii U emulation. Here we have Marvel vs. Capcom. Here it is at 1080 with a medium-low mix. Unfortunately, we can't hit up all medium settings at 1080p with this. And the same goes for something like Street Fighter V, but I've had really good luck with fighting games on these chips here with integrated graphics. And even Mortal Kombat 11 at 900p with a low-medium mix does run at full speed. Next up, we've got GTA V 900p normal settings. I was really hoping we were going to get a little better out of this game. Unfortunately, at 1080p, we only get an average of around 52 FPS, so I did have to drop it down to 900, but with it set up like this, it's very playable. I just wish we could do 1080p with this DDR4 RAM. And finally, we've got God of War at 720p low. Now it's time for a little more emulation, and first we have PS2 using PCSX2, upscaled to 1080p using the DirectX 11 backend, and with some of the easier to run stuff, we can even go up to 1440p and 4K with the system just like it sits. And finally here, we've got some Wii U emulation using SimU, Bayonetta 2, 1080p, Vulcan backend, Really great performance when it comes to the SimU emulator on the 1260p. I haven't run into any games that really don't work. As long as it's compatible with the emulator, you should get great performance out of it. So with the integrated graphics, it's not bad for a board this size, but we can upgrade the GPU performance here because it's got Thunderbolt 4 built in. So what I've done here is just plug in my eGPU enclosure. I've got an RTX 3060, it's a non-TI variant. Uh, all the drivers are installed and updated from NVIDIA. And now we can definitely game on this at a much higher resolution. And I've noticed we get higher clocks on the CPU also because we don't need to send any power to the internal GPU. This is all going to be handled by that RTX. So if you remember earlier, we were at low 720p with God of War and we got an average of 34 FPS. Now, with the RTX 3060, we're at 1080p Ultra settings, and we can get an average of around 78 FPS. Looks really good here, very playable. And we could do this at 1440p with a little bit of DLSS on, but you know, I've only got a 1080p monitor connected right now, and this is really, really great performance. And if you take a look at Afterburner, you can see the clocks on that 1260p are much higher. We averaged around 2.4 to 2.8 before using the internal graphics. And now we're at 3.5 to 4 because we don't have those internal graphics going and it doesn't need to send any power over there. I actually picked this board up for a project I have coming up on the channel, so keep an eye out. It's actually going to be pretty cool. But overall, this is a great performer, especially when it comes to the CPU performance side of things. Obviously, when it comes to these Iris XE graphics, it does leave a little more to be desired. But like I mentioned, they do sell Ryzen versions of this up to the 5800U. I personally went with Intel given the single core performance because I'm mainly going to be using this for emulation in my upcoming project and it handles everything that I've thrown at it except for Xbox 360 and with that it really comes down to those integrated graphics. If I have that RTX 3060 connected to it, it'll definitely handle 360. But like it sits right now, we can do original Xbox, PS3, PS2, Switch, 3DS, Dreamcast, you name it, this thing will definitely run it even with those Iris XE graphics. 
I will have at least one more video coming up with this board, so if there's anything else you want to see running on it, definitely let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more about these, I will leave a link to the ASRock Industrial website in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this video, and like always, thanks for watching.